Hey, welcome to News You Can Use. I'm your host, BG. And today we have a pretty special story about a family reunited after 30 years. I know. But before we get into all those details, I need you to do a few things, like subscribing to this channel, tapping that notification bell, and make sure to follow us on all of our social media. Those details, by the way, are in the description below. So, I want to introduce you to a man. His name is Michel Prentice. And at nine months old, he was adopted by a Canadian family. He was moved from Haiti to a small town two hours outside of Toronto. He had no connection to his biological roots until he received one message 30 years later. Let's hear his story. Michelle Prentice, thanks so much for joining us here on News You Can Use. Thank you. Here we are kind of sitting uh, in Toronto with Canadian winter, uh, but your story doesn't start technically in Canada. There's a backstory to you. Right. Talk to me a little bit about that. So I'm actually an ad adoptee. Mm -hmm. I was adopted from Haiti yeah. in the 90s and then brought to Canada. So I did grow up here, but born in Haiti. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so what age were you adopted and moved here? with your adopted uh, family? I was about nine months. Wow. Yes, nine months. And I have a, a brother mm -hmm. from the same orphanage who mm -hmm. I was uh, with, and he is from another family. So mm -hmm. we were both adopted together, but not blood related. Wow. Mm -hmm. Now, I want to tell our viewers, this is a story of a family reunited. But before we even get to all of that, we want to hear more of this backstory. So you were adopted while you were just nine months old. Correct. So you don't remember anything about Haiti? No, no, nothing was going on up there. Jeez. <laughs> yeah. And then where in Canada did you move to with your adopted family? So we moved to a really small town, two and a half hours northwest of the city. Okay. It's called Flesherton. So that's where I grew up, country boy. What was it like, I mean, growing up as a child who was adopted? Like, did your parents look like you? Were they of the same no. ethnicity? They weren't, no, okay. but my parents are white. Okay. It's a, a transracial adoption. Mm -hmm. And so I grew up around a uh, predominantly white community mm -hmm. in that sense. Uh, just growing up, it was, it was always an adjustment to, to tell people like I'm adopted, my yeah. parents are white, people wouldn't catch on. Yeah even when we would go to restaurants, like out, out to restaurants as teens, my brother uh, and my, both my parents, the, the hostess, the waiter would give us like separate menus and they would think we were coming as separate parties. Jeez. Yeah, <laughs> this is wild. The countryside, Brandon, wild times. What age did, you, were, did your parents tell you that you were adopted? Oof, at what age? I recollect I was about seven, six or seven. Six or seven? Yes. Do you remember the question you asked your parents? Uh, yeah, I asked if my biological parents were alive or where were they, mm -hmm. even why I was put up for adoption. And the orphanage didn't even give them much context as to where my parents were. Uh, and they had told me my mother had died, given birth to me. However, that wow. wasn't true at all. Uh, how, did, how did you find out that that wasn't true? So, uh, years later, mm -hmm. I found that out, that the orphanage told that to my, um, my parents who adopted me just to give them more incentive mm -hmm. to just adopt us, uh, myself and my brother, uh, with that tragic story. Yeah. So, I had no idea that I had five other brothers out there uh, until last year mm -hmm. when one of my biological brothers reached out to me through LinkedIn mm -hmm. and he was saying I think I'm your brother mm -hmm. he showed me images pictures of myself uh, that I had never even put online or anything like that mm -hmm. so I was a little skeptic at first like how did this person even get these photos? Yeah, like, that might be odd. Like just somebody yeah. randomly just appearing being like, I know you, right. <laughs> but you don't know them. No, not at all. But he did look similar to me. Like yeah. that I couldn't really deny. And, and he was just giving me types of information that only 
like that I'd never really put online that he would know. And then he just told me I had uh, four other brothers plus himself. And they were just like all over the country. There's one in Chile, there was one in Brazil, Florida, and Minnesota. How did your parents react so to they this were, man saying that there's, you have a whole nother family out there? Yeah, they were shocked. Like, <laughs> we were all just like very shocked, but they especially were very supportive of this mm -hmm. news. And they had thought that it could be possible, that one day it could be possible. And so they were very reassuring in that sense. And we just gave him the chance to tell us his story and just, um, Tell us like how this all came together. How did it come together? Did you guys talk on the phone? Did you guys meet up? Walk me through that process. So, um, my brother Eloi, mm -hmm. he's from Baltimore. Okay. And he had been searching for for me and other brothers for about 15 years of his 15 life. 15 years he's been searching for mm. you guys. Yes. So he still kept the, hit, the same last name Prentice as well. Is that how he was connecting the dots? No. Uh, so, so my brother um, from Baltimore, Eloi, yeah. he was adopted into a, like another transracial adoption story. Yeah. And his last name is Ferguson. Oh. So he was uh, searching for, for Prentice because he had a photo of myself when my parents had sent photos back to the orphanage when I was 14 years old. Wow. Mm -hmm. So 15 years of searching mm -hmm. finally mm -hmm. makes this contact with you. Yes. What happens next in all of that? Uh, then he slowly introduced my brothers to me. Yeah. One by one on Facebook. You're and now learning you have more siblings. Yes, siblings and cousins and nieces, nephews that I never knew existed that looked like me and it's it's just the most gratifying experience you had your family here but biologically you had mm. all of this family yes. that you had no idea about mm -hmm. how do you describe those emotions oof uh it was so much to really process and take in like my brothers would when we were chatting online, mm -hmm. say they loved me and like we're so happy that you're together. And they told me the story of, of them crying when uh, I had left to go to the orphanage and crying after. Ooh. And it, w it, was, it was a lot for me to take in and reciprocate. Because they're older, they yes. witnessed through their eyes you leaving. Yes, correct never knowing if they would ever see you again. They didn't think they would ever see me again. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. Have you guys gotten the chance to meet physically yet? No, we haven't, but we are planning to meet in December. Yeah. Mid-December, one of my brothers, he lives in Florida. Mm -hmm. And so we're, unfortunately, we're not all able to meet, mm -hmm. but the three and myself are able to connect finally mm -hmm. and in Florida I have cousins as well and it's just gonna be like a fun celebration that I can't wait for I'm yeah. nervous mind you yeah I am but uh, it's it's gotta happen did you growing up did you always want to search for biologically who you were connected to my parents had told me that my mother had died giving birth to me they didn't know where my father was. Again, little to no information from the orphanage they yeah. got out of the, that place. So, What does that do to somebody at a young age? Not knowing, I guess. Mm. It was, it was heartbreaking. Yeah. yeah, really it was truly tough to realize that there were no uh, like parents mm -hmm. like that. Um, that it, it's like a... Uh, losing a, a culture mm. for me. What has been the biggest surprise of this entire process for you? The biggest surprise would definitely be uh, seeing my, my mother, my bi biological mother. Uh, because when I was younger, my parents had told me about my mother and how she died giving birth to me. And 
I was very upset, very sad. And so my parents were like, why don't you try and draw a picture of her? And just the fact that I'd never had a reference photo of what she looked like was, it was heartbreaking. Yeah. I couldn't, I couldn't even do it. Like I, I really tried to envision what her face might look like and it was too much for me. So she's alive now. Correct, yes. She lives in? She lives in Haiti. And you met her over Skype or something like that? No, so I have not formally met her okay. through Skype or So you haven't met her yet? No. But I'm, you've just seen a photo? Correct, yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. And seeing that photo, did you see yourself in her? I did, yeah. I see all my brothers. Uh, in her and yeah. it's it's just such a crazy experience seeing people that look like me for the first time in my adulthood yeah I never thought I'd get the opportunity do you want to meet her in person absolutely it's going to happen what do you think you would say to her when you meet her she yeah. is actually mentally ill she has uh, schizophrenia okay so uh, although like I do want to reach out mm -hmm. and tell her that I'm okay and I'm here and I'm just ready to start this new chapter in my life. Yeah. It is going to be reciprocated to a degree. Got it. I would love to give her a big hug uh, first yeah. and foremost and then just let her know that everything is okay and I'm here, I'm healthy. Uh, and hopefully she's reciprocating of that energy. What would you say to other kids who have gone through the journey that you've gone through in terms of being adopted? I would say through transracial adoption specific, uh, just never give up, uh, just being who you are, becoming who you are, uh, no matter what community mm -hmm. you're from, just persevere and stay strong and eventually things get better. Miracles happen. Michelle, thanks so much for joining us here on Easy News. We appreciate hearing about your story and congratulations. Thank you. Appreciate you, Brandon. Hey BG Squad, thanks so much for checking out our channel and listen to this. We have more great content for you like this video right here and this video right here. By the way, don't forget to subscribe to this channel right now and tap that notification bell.